What? What? Pain in your ribs again? Let me take a look here. What is going on with you? Oh. Oh. My gosh. Wow. You are never allowed to go to a Renaissance fair again. Do you understand me? Oh. <laughs> Hi. I am Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find 600 articles on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author, along with my lovely wife, Amy, of the Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, and also the New York Times bestseller in health, The Ebola Survival Handbook. Both can be found on Amazon. This is America's favorite squawk box. T.D. Bird, and this guy should never be running with scissors, I'll say that, bud. Hey, you know, in our last video, we discussed some basics about stab wounds and hemorrhage in general. This time, we're going to tell you just what to do if you come across someone with a sharp, penetrating injury. Follow these steps. Assess the safety of the situation. Make sure that the situation is secure. It makes no sense for you to become the next casualty. Put on gloves if possible. Your hands are full of bacteria and you're going to reduce the risk of infection by doing so if you have some on you. Non-latex gloves like nitrile are superior in avoiding allergic reactions which are more commonly seen than you'd think. If no gloves are available, plastic bags, saran wrap, or at least hand sanitizer or soap and water will be useful if you have to touch the wound with bare hands. You have to work fast though, so don't dilly-dally. Verify the patient's breathing and mental status. Clear airways if they're obstructed and determine if they're alert enough, if your victim is alert enough to help you by following commands. Remove their clothing carefully to fully inspect the wound and identify if there are other injuries. Make sure you have a bandage scissors or EMT shears in your medical pack. Elevate the feet above the level of the heart and head so that you are in or your, vic your patient is in the shock position to increase blood flow to the brain. If the sharp instrument is still in the body, don't remove it. It may be providing pressure on damaged blood vessels and decreasing the bleeding. Instead, stabilize the wound in place with dressings or in any way you can. If there's no chance of emergency services reaching you, such as in a backcountry trip in an underdeveloped country or a true survival setting, you may have to remove it at one point or another. Don't do this unless you're where the bulk of your medical supplies are. Apply pressure with some type of dressing, even your shirt if you have to. Most non-arterial bleeding will stop with steady pressure on the wound. If the sharp instrument's in place and help is on the way, place pressure down on either side towards the flat of the blade to prevent it from slipping out and decreasing bleeding. Elevate the injured area above the heart. That will make it more difficult to pump blood out of the body. Some recommend applying additional pressure with your other hand to major arteries above the level of the wound, especially for extremities. These areas are called pressure points. For example, a major artery, the popliteal artery, is found behind the knee. Pressure here might decrease bleeding from a lower leg wound. There's an entire map of pressure points for most parts of the body. There are some that don't buy the pressure point theory, just to let you know. If simple pressure fails, consider applying a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Tourniquets are to be used only when absolutely necessary as they also stop the circulation of undamaged arteries and veins. These will cause damage or death of tissue beyond the level of the wound if they're left on too long. They also hurt after a very short time like a son of a gun. If a tourniquet's on, you may choose to loosen it after a period of time to determine if the blood's clotting mechanisms have stopped the bleeding. This should be done in a controlled setting because it unfortunately can also cause further bleeding. This is mostly a strategy for when help is not on the way. If you're transporting a patient to a modern medical facility, make sure you mark a T on the patient's forehead with the time or otherwise notify emergency personnel. In certain circumstances, the use of blood clotting agents such as Quick Clot or Celox may be helpful. They're effective in stopping bleeding, although they're sometimes difficult to clean out later. We keep these products in all of our medical packs, even individual first aid kits. Once bleeding has subsided, don't remove a dressing unless you have to. There are clots that can be dislodged if you do, and this may restart the bleeding. Add additional dressings on top if help is on the way. Now, in survival situations, you eventually will have to change and clean wound dressings. This must be done regularly, but it must be done very slowly and very carefully.
Secure everything with a pressure dressing, of which there are various excellent ones on the market. The Israeli battle dressing, known as the emergency bandage in the U.S., has a hinge which can apply up to 30 pounds of pressure if it's used properly. It's an excellent addition to your medical kit. Keep your victim warm. Throw a Mylar blanket or a blanket or a coat over them to keep them from getting cold. If help is coming, keep them as still and calm as possible to avoid further bleeding. Monitor their breathing, pulses, mental status. An unconscious patient should be placed in what we call the recovery position on the side. You'll see the image right here. This will, among other things, allow fluid to drain from airways and help them breathe. All of the above may not be necessary if you practice preventative measures. In other words, don't run with scissors, bud. With some foresight, you might just be able to avoid a mishap that could turn into a tragedy. Feel free to post your advice in the comments section below. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, are you looking for a great Christmas or birthday gift for that older child that just might get them interested in the challenging world of survival? Take a quick look at our new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival. It's a great way to get the whole family involved in a very fun manner without cramming all this down their throats. Check it out at www.survivalboardgame.com. Thanks.